B650E versus X870E. Two AMD AM5 chipsets, two very different price points, and a whole lot of confusion. Over the next few minutes, we're cutting through the marketing hype and breaking down the specs and features so you can decide which chipset actually makes sense for your next Ryzen build. Shout out to Gigabyte for sponsoring this video. AMD's AM5 platform is the successor to AM4, and it's built for the long haul. AMD is committed to supporting it until at least 2027. That means future CPUs should be able to drop right into the same motherboards that you're buying today. And that's great news for upgraders. Now, the letters and numbers in these chipset names can be confusing. B650E, X870E, what do they mean? The B series has traditionally been AMD's mid-range offering. More affordable, fewer extreme features, while the X series is the premium tier, loaded with high-end connectivity and overclocking options and usually supports faster memory frequencies. And what about that E at the end? That's actually important. It stands for extreme, and in AMD's terms, it means full PCIe 5.0 support for your graphics card and at least one NVMe storage slot. So whether you choose B650E or X870E, you're getting that cutting-edge PCIe 5.0 bandwidth right out of the box. Let's talk about PCIe lanes, because this is where the differences between the two chipsets starts to show. Both B650E and X870E give you 24 PCIe 5.0 lanes coming directly from the CPU. Typically, 16 of those go to your graphics card and four go to your main NVMe SSD slot. The remaining four lanes are general purpose or GPP lanes that motherboard manufacturers can use to connect other devices like additional drives or expansion cards. Where X870E pulls ahead is in the lanes coming from the chipset. B650E offers a smaller number of extra lanes, usually around 8 or 12 PCIe 4.0 or PCIe 3.0 lanes combined. That's enough for a few extra NVMe drives, maybe a capture card, a network card, or some USB controllers. X870E, on the other hand, uses a dual chipset design. It's basically two chipset dies linked together. This gives it room for significantly more expansion, up to 12 PCIe 4.0 lanes and eight PCIe 3.0 lanes on top of what you're getting from the CPU. What does this mean for you as a system builder? If you're just running a single GPU, one or two NVMe drives, and a couple USB devices, you might not even notice a difference. But if you're the kind of user who loads up a system with multiple NVMe drives, RAID cards, capture cards, and high-speed networking, then those extra lanes can make or break your build. Connectivity is another big differentiator. B650E gives you solid USB options, usually one super speed 20 gigabits per second port, up to six super speed 10 gigabit ports, and a five gigabit port or some 480 megabit USB 2.0 ports for stuff like keyboards and mice. X870E kicks it up a notch. Not only can it support two super speed 20 gigabits per second USB ports, but AMD now requires USB 4 support on all X870E motherboards. USB 4 means up to 40 gigabits per second bandwidth, which is fast enough for external GPUs, ultra-fast storage arrays, and high-resolution video capture over a single cable. X870E boards also tend to include more total USB ports, more high-speed 10 gigabits per second ports, and the latest networking standards like Wi-Fi 7 and 2.5 or even 10 gigabit LAN. So if your most demanding USB task is plugging in a webcam and maybe a few flash drives, then B650E is gonna be perfectly fine. But if you live in a world of big file transfers, multiple external NVMe drives, and professional video gear, then X870E has a clear advantage here. One of the less obvious differences between these chipsets is actually in the chipset architecture itself. B650E boards use a single chipset die. This keeps manufacturing costs lower and allows for smaller, simpler boards, which is why you'll see B650E in a lot of compact micro ATX and mini ITX builds. X870E uses that dual chipset configuration I mentioned earlier, and that's great for adding more PCIe lanes and more connectivity, but it also means more complexity, larger boards, and higher costs. That dual chip approach also tends to show up in the overall feature set. X870E boards are almost always built with premium VRMs for better overclocking, heavier heat sinks for better cooling, and extras like debug LEDs, BIOS flashback buttons, and reinforced PCIe slots. If you're pushing a Ryzen 9 9950X 3D or similar high core count CPU, that extra VRM strength on X870E boards can help keep things stable under heavy loads. X870E is also designed to support higher memory frequencies and is more likely to achieve stability with extremely high speed memory kits. So in the real world, who benefits from X870E and who's fine with B650E? For gamers who just want to run a single GPU, one or two NVMe drives, and maybe a capture card, B650E has more than enough horsepower. You're still getting PCIe 5.0, DDR5 support, and all the performance your CPU can deliver. For content creators and workstation users, that's where things start to shift. 
If you're juggling multiple 4K or 8K video streams, running multiple NVMe scratch drives, and using high-speed external devices, the extra lanes and USB 4 on the X870e platform can save you from bottlenecks. And for hardcore enthusiasts, think custom water-cooled setups, multiple GPUs for compute workloads, and server-like storage arrays, X870e's expansion potential is easily worth the price. Price is often the deciding factor for a lot of system builders. B650e motherboards can start in the sub $200 price range for solid mid-range models, but of course you can expect to pay more for high-end B650e boards with great VRMs and cooling. X870e boards, on the other hand, always cost more than their B650e counterparts, and they can get very expensive for flagship models loaded with top-tier features. So the question becomes, what is USB 4, extra PCIe lanes, stronger power components, and premium build quality worth to you? For budget-conscious builders, saving on a motherboard could go into a faster GPU, a larger SSD, or a higher-end CPU cooler, upgrades that may have a more direct impact on performance, depending on what you're doing. And finally, let's talk about future-proofing. Both B650e and X870e are ready for the latest Ryzen CPUs and next-gen GPUs. Both give you PCIe 5.0, DDR5, and the AM5 socket. If you know your needs aren't going to exceed the limits of B650e, then it's a solid choice that's going to serve you well for the entire lifespan of the AM5 platform. Where X870e pulls ahead is in sheer headroom. If you want USB 4 today, or you think you'll need multiple PCIe 5.0 drives in the future, or you just want the absolute best your board can offer for upgrades, then X870e is clearly the safer and more future-proof option. Here's the bottom line. Choose B650e if you want great performance at a reasonable price, you don't need USB 4 or a huge number of expansion cards, and you'd rather put that extra money into other components. Choose X870e if you want maximum connectivity, USB 4, Wi-Fi 7, high-grade power components, and expansion lanes for a workstation class setup that's going to future-proof you for years to come. In short, B650e is a smart choice for most gamers and mainstream system builders. X870e is for power users, creators, and enthusiasts who know exactly how they'll use all that extra bandwidth. All right, that's gonna be it for this breakdown. Hopefully this video helped you figure out which chipset fits your build, and more importantly, your budget. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and get subscribed for more, and drop a comment down below and let me know which chipset you'd choose for your next AM5 build. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.